wave over. Now this stuff does not take that long to dry. It's actually pretty fast drying, but I'm on the impatient side because I want to get to the design part real fast. Carrie, man, you'll love this design. I would think you would love it. Oh, look at that. Absolutely. Oh, look at the thumb. Yeah. You know what? This is something that Gene Simmons would wear. Right? Oh, jeez. You know what? Let's message him and see if he likes it. For those of you who don't know, because you're probably not old. <laughs> yeah, I just love it. I think they've heard of Kiss. Well, yeah, maybe. Some people might not have. Okay, so I'm going to put another coat of this, and you can see the intensity of the color. See that? Spectacular. It is spectacular. I just love it. I mean, it really, I think it's multi-chrome, I think this is called. But you can definitely see the shift in the colors. Look well, at that. And what's really interesting, when you look, look at, the, at the one camera, which is over top of you, Yeah. It, it has, you can really see one color. And then when I look at the other camera, which I can switch to now, right? Uh, it, you can really see it's more of the purple. Yeah. Now, not to confuse anybody, I will say I did paint the blue one. This index finger is the blue one. Right, and it's called Blue Ain't Slick. <laughs> but this one, uh, I wanted specifically because it's the purple and the green together, which makes me think of dragon skin. Isn't that what dragons are made of? I mean, last time I looked, oh, they can be uh, it's a fairy tale. I haven't seen one in a while. Blue. This is a great color for it, though. I, yeah. I, yeah, it's just perfect. So now we have to wait. It's a high room. So I've been getting into some cooking and uh, been doing a lot of cleaning, a lot of reorganizing, and organizing cupboards and counters and closets and everything. Like okay, so while we're waiting for it to dry, I want to get myself a little bowl of water. Just let me move this because I don't want to get my hand rest all wet. Okay, so a little bowl of water. But I did learn this. If I use dish soap, but I'm sure all sorts of different dish so soaps. I should have did that beat a little bit drier, bubbles, but... I found I haven't done my nails in like over a week and a half. Why does that matter? So I need to play with the ratios a little bit. Like, if you take a look, see how this is a big bubble in comparison to the littler bubbles. I like the And I should have drained it so that it was drier. Why it just reminds me of the dragon skin a little bit more. Maybe I picture an eyeball in there. I should try that one time. So I do like the bigger bubbles combined with the littler bubbles. So I found that the um, shampoo for the hair gave me the bigger bubbles. Now I get a whisk because it'll hopefully fluff it up a little bit more. I was using this a, brush this is this what I got in stick. the acrylic the pro kit. So really I wanted to try it out and see how nice, I liked it. You know, fluffy. Um, big so I'm just it is pour a very. In here. Don't need much. It's not so stiff. Okay. And I'm just going to. Um, it's very soft. It I personally like a stiffer brush. So I find when I am fluffing it up, I kind of whip air into it. That gets the bigger bubbles. If you just swish it back and forth, the bubbles are kind of little and they're pretty. And if you have a smaller nail, it might not matter to you. But if you want the big bubbles, you kind of want to fluff in, like totally get that air blended in there to get those bubbles. Bioscribe was founded about two years ago by Jay West and I, and the initial aim was to commercialize and uh, really maximize the, the impact of our new technology primary template amplification to study cellular evolution. The mission of Bioscribe is to understand disease at a very basic level, which is the essentially the molecular pathology of the genome of individual cells. Uh, that provides us the ability to focus therapies at the patients that need the most. The vision is, is that we can take this huge amount of information and present it to the clinicians and translational researchers who need it most to help patients. The invention of primary template amplification was really inspired by the desire to be able to much more accurately measure tumor heterogeneity. You know, many of the fundamental questions about tumor genomics at the population scale are still unknown. For example, um, we don't know even how many mutations there are per cell and, and how that leads to the population uh, complexity uh, and have very little insight into how these tumors evolve in the face of treatment. 
So the BioScribe technology of PTA or primary template directed amplification is basically amplifying or making multiple Sorry, I'm, of the uh, DNA strand. It's actually a little hard to get it. <laughs> um, I might move the camera up a little bit because it's kind of hard to get it at an angle so that you guys could see it. And I could actually do my nails. And it's already hard enough to do your nails by yourself, so yeah. So this way it gives you a more uniform mapping or a more uniform structure of the whole genome. The PTA technology also gives more uniform, more accurate, and reproducible products of the entire genome amplification. This is um, Young Nails Speed Clear, just so that you know what I'm working with. It enables users to rapidly extract insights from data deriving from result DNA. You put your Trail finger down and you kind of let it flow. I knew this finger, honestly, for some reason. Um, my thumb is always like my practice finger, I swear. It's like, it's always the finger that I need to, um, kind of get used to the acrylic again, you know. Their group is focused on better understanding neurological disease. I always have to like kind of get used to it all over again. And sometimes when I uh, need to do the tip, I uh, just put it upside down and kind of let it flow backwards. We've Try to always keep, you know, the sidewalls relatively, um, so term, you know, together so that you don't have to file it so much. Because you're going to need to file it a little bit, um, no matter what. But don't. Let me take this. I'm over here watching. Male yeah. career education. I'm so impatient. Let me just touch it. That's not bad. Still a little tacky. You can see a fingerprint, but you won't be able to see that when I'm finished. Reminds me of the old days. Takes me back to 1980. When I used to wait for nail polish to dry. And it didn't dry as fast as what it does now. I love nail polish, though. Don't get me wrong. I absolutely love nail polish. I love the fluidity of the way it goes on. Gel polish is different. Anyway, I don't want to get going on that, but I just want to tell you that. <laughs> because I'm waiting. Okay. Okay, so now... and you can I always... I'm like obsessed with painting my brush. Coat and their lamp. And I'm telling you that so that okay. you can... Because you don't need a license to buy this stuff and you don't need a license to buy the Coco and Claire gel top coat and the lamp. I think and I need to do need to just a little coat. bit on the apex. Okay, so what I'm going to do is paint on a top coat. Like right Now, when you're here. painting on a top coat, one thing I did learn, if you put it on thicker, the gel top coat that is, you'll have a deeper crevice. It's like the surface of the moon. Anyway, if you put it on thinner, it'll be a little more shallow. So I'm going to put it on whatever I think feels good. But I just literally paint the gel on the surface of the whole nail. Yeah. Alrighty, on to the next finger. Now this one I hope I uh the bubbles. Don't scoop up the water. Just scoop up do a dryer bead so I'm going to drain it. Thing that you scoop so it that there's no better. extra liquid. And try not to touch the nail with your scooper. Oh. Just want to get those bubbles on there from the cuticle to the tip, and then immediately stick it under your. And you want to just build it right on the free edge between and your as nail. It is curing it, the gel that is. As the light is curing the gel, the bubbles are disintegrating, and it leaves the texture behind of the dragon's skin. It's brilliant. I wish I knew who did it because it's brilliant and that's all you need no top coat if you top coat it it might fill in the crevices and it takes away the texture and you can't see it as well but essentially you did top coat it because you used a top coat to create the texture 
Okay, now when you bring it out, you still might have some soap suds on there. And this so is a, a um, pad, absorb up the soap suds because it's I turned now, off right? the it's all done. my heater. Soak up the soap so it suds, is a little bit colder in here. Finished result. And look at that. And you can the speed feel it. clear amazing. is still wow, drying pretty Isn't um that cool. Quick. I love the texture of it. I like it because it's even not like really bulky texture, but this is so even and smooth, and you can see it really well. Yeah, it's really 3D. It is. It's 3D, but it still keeps within the shape of the nail, which is sort of my thing. Okay. Nice 3D that look. was too yeah. thin. This index really. That blue is really nice. Yeah. That really sharp blue right yeah. Let's check out the reveal shots. Okay. I don't know if you can see that spot because it's clear, but. I had to definitely drain everything so that. Very cool. What a fun, easy, quick technique that you guys can do. Also, I did it before about, I think Karen Man said it was 2019. Ooh. Beautiful video, with almost like snakeskin. In fact, that's what we called it. Check it out. And I kind of pat the edge just to kind of make sure it's going to be a nice C curve. And that is, oh. I'm going right to the end. I don't know. I haven't had my nails done in quite a long time. So I don't know if I'm going to regret this. But we shall see. <laughs> okay. And I just push it up to the cuticle, not too much. And then you just let it flow down. Yeah, this, I don't know if I like, I don't know if I like this brush or I dislike this brush. Can't say I don't like it, but I can't say it's my favorite either, to be honest. So, yeah. Yeah, I can't say. So I uh, flow it down. It's kind of hard to like um, show you guys without me ruining my nail. But I just guide it down the 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 length of your nail, or however how long you're doing your nails. You know, my nails are a little bit longer, so. Uh, I, I have a, a longer time to go. I don't think anyone's having a good day. Today's not really a good day. Everyone's waiting on 
you know, the thing that's going on right now. Everyone's nervous and not having a good day. So, yeah. So I kind of go like, I take my brush and kind of like the tip of it. But I don't let it touch like any, you do not want it to touch your cuticle at all. You know, you kind of just like, uh, take this very, very, you see how it comes to a very nice point. It's very nice and thin. I just take that and kind of let it push some of the acrylic to the back end closer to the cuticle, but not where it's it touches the cuticle at all. You do not want it touching the cuticle at all. Okay. On to the next. Drain the bead. I probably shouldn't have started with a speed clear today, especially since I haven't done my nails and I'm doing such a long set with um, forms. But hey, you learn through. Pushing yourself. You will not get better. No? 